the first problem which might occur in meditations, which I would like to discuss, are emotions. So many people try to handle emotions by meditating. So when they're angry or upset or sad, they try to meditate to make the emotions in a way go away or to bring them under control. But it is actually quite hard to meditate if we are in the grip of such emotions. So to deal with that, and, uh, we need, really need to understand what is happening when we are emotional. So what is happening in our body? Um, our body goes in a state of excitement. And uh, we create lots of uh, hormones which correlate with that uh, state of excitement. Uh, we create endorphins to dull the pain, to give us energy. Um, we lots of adrenaline also to give us kind of a higher muscle tension because ultimately as a survival tool emotions are there to give us power to give us strength to give us resolve and the body goes along with it so often em emotion is in some way a stress signal and it can be a, a pleasurable stress like a, being in love, for instance, or being excited about something. And it can also be an unpleasant stress, like being angry or um, sad or afraid. But ultimately, hormonally, there is not such a big difference between these uh, different types of emotion. Hormones take a while to get started. They also take a while to filter out and we have cycles in hormones and um, for instance if a person falls in love well, for some people it will take years for these hormones to filter out other people tend to fall in love for very brief periods a few days a few weeks a few months and we're all different in this sense also how the more hormones we create generally the stronger the emotional effects will be Emotions arise from the more primitive parts of our brain, the more animal parts, you could say. Because animals also have emotions, dogs, cats, sheep, pigs. And we humans have a relatively unique ability. Uh, we can, in a way, try to control the emotions, or we can, uh, in a way, lie to ourselves. Like if an animal is happy or afraid, it will behave like that. It will growl when it is angry, it will run away or cringe when it is afraid. And we humans have a secondary system. We don't simply have an emotion leading immediately to a reaction. We also have our ability to think, to reason, which is in a way in between the emotion and our body. So our bodies are not immediately reacting or showing the emotions. We are able, when we're angry, not to hit the person. We are also able, when we're afraid, not to run away. We can reason about this, we can make decisions about this. So we have an added layer of control, but that doesn't make the urge any less strong. So to able to meditate, we need to understand there is a certain level of excitement. This level of excitement also creates movements within our physical body. It also creates movements in our thoughts, in our emotional experience, and also in our energy bodies. How we interpret these movements that determines how we experience the emotion. So if something unexpected happens, um, our body will react with a shock, create these hormones, and we will become emotional. And if we think that the unexpected thing is a very negative thing, like, for instance, I step on a sharp nail, then it will probably create a reaction, which is typically a negative emotion, anger, fear, sadness. And if it is an unexpected thing, which we think is positive, like um, I meet my lover or there's a very nice breakfast on the table then it will usually be happiness and excitement and um, 
feelings of elation uh, or hope. So it is really our circumstances and how we define our circumstances which defines our emotion. So ultimately we can decide by manipulating how we look at things what our emotional reaction will be. This is easier said than done because our emotions have a kind of a habitual response pattern. So when we are young we don't know how to react to things so we just go into some state of confused crying. But as we get older we learn to show and to differentiate between anger, sadness, hope, disappointment, frustration and we start expressing them in different ways and we also start experiencing them as tools. So if I want something, well, what works better? Does it work better to get angry? Does it work better to get sad and to cry? So ultimately we develop a repertoire of emotions to help us to cope with the world and with the, ultimately to use the emotion to remove and relieve the stress which caused the state of excitement within our bodies. So the way I try to view emotion when I'm meditating is more or less as, a, as water or um, a fire. It is something which has definite power, it has a presence, but it doesn't really have a fixed shape. It can be molded, it can be guided to a different place within my body within my being and by moving it to a different location it will also have a different effect. So what generally happens is that energy starts to rise from the lower parts of our being where our power is into higher parts of our being when we're emotional. So a lot of our abilities and power gets awakened and becomes accessible or consciousness. So what happens if these things reach our consciousness is that our consciousness can become a little bit flooded, we become a little bit dizzy and disoriented by all these rising powers and rising energy. So one of the first things to do if you notice that you're very emotional in a meditation is try to contain emotions a little bit more. It's okay for them to rise up to the level of the heart, but it's not okay to let them go over your head. <laughs> so try to feel the emotions in the lower part of your body and in your heart, but try to also allow them to go down, because ultimately an emotion is a lower vibration lower vibrations should also stay in the parts of our energy body which can deal with those lower vibrations, which can contain them and which can guide them. But our higher chakras are simply not suitable for that. So we cannot really work with emotions by bringing them up to these higher chakras and trying to transform them by a mere act of thought or reasoning. but they can be our ally. So these emotions which come up, they try to associate with certain thought patterns of like, oh, I hate you or I love you. But ultimately, we should not allow the lower energies, the lower vibrations to dictate to the higher vibrations. It should be the other way around. So ultimately, we should begin a meditation with an intention like, gosh, I'm very emotional, I'm very upset, but how would I like to feel? Would I like to feel relaxed or elated or energized or maybe I would enjoy feeling my sadness and go deeper into that or uh, to realize my fear and to let it out, not to hide it, not to repress it all the time. It's also possible to just allow things which are negative or experiences negative to exist. Because we don't have to fear negative emotions if we're no longer 
controlled by them, like we're no longer swamped by them. So once we have this, um, you could say, goal of how we wish to feel, and we have this firmly in our head, in our higher chakras, then we can use that as a mold to dictate the form of our emotion for other energies. So ultimately it is a decision. We can be controlled by our circumstances. Of course if I stub my toe my first reaction won't be to feel very peaceful and blissful. It will be to jump around on one foot and curse <laughs> because I stub my toe and it is hurting. <laughs> but this is a circumstance and the circumstance is dictating how I act, how I think, um, how I experience my, my being. And meditation is very much about making yourself more flexible, giving yourself the opportunity to do things in different ways, to grow, to alter yourself, to free yourself from your pattern. So if we continue in this pattern of allow, allowing our circumstances to dictate how, what we think and what we feel, then we will never get control over our emotions and our emotions will continue dictating our thoughts and our experience. But in a way to compensate for our experiences, we have our willpower. We have our ability to manage ourselves, to control ourselves and to control our energies, and our energy body. So once we have this goal of trying to feel a certain way, we have to slowly start deconstructing the existing pattern and allowing the emotional power to flow into a new pattern. So for instance, something happened and I'm angry or upset. This is an existing pattern, like it's an existing riverbed you could say. But the first thing we need to do is to dam that riverbed, to say like, okay, this is a pattern of this happens, I'm upset, and I'm not going to use this pattern anymore. I'm going to block off this way of emotional flow. And this requires some discipline, because every time you notice you're doing it, you should hold yourself and say like, well, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going to get angry again. I'm not going to upset, get upset again about the same thing happening. Because if the same thing happens again and again and again, you will repeat the same reaction again and again and again, and you're stuck in an endless loop. And this is what meditation is for, to get you out of these endless loops. And to do that, you have to cut it first. And once it is cut, you will feel confusion, excitement, uh, often anxiety, because you can't follow your normal pattern and you become uncertain what to do with all this energy, with all this pressure. And then you basically try to create a different association or a different analysis of the situation, like, oh, I stuck my toe, instead of being angry and frustrated because I didn't want it to happen. I can say like, okay, this is a sign to take it more easy, to sit down and maybe nurture myself, take care of my wounded foot. Um, it's my foot, so maybe I should pay more attention to my basis, my body, my presence here on earth. Uh, be more attentive and in tune with my environment, not so stuck in my head and in my duties. So then you try to treat it as a lesson, for instance, and then the emotion which you should elicit would be interest, curiosity, um, excitement about learning something new. So the excitement will be there because your body has been excited, but you can change the form of the excitement instead of anger and frustration into curiosity and deepened attention and heightened awareness of yourself and your environment. I'm not promising that even with these 
yeah, instructions, you will get it right the first time around. It's very tricky to deal with emotions, but it's very important also to realize that emotions are not an enemy to meditation. They can guide you into deeper meditation. They can help you to transform more quickly in your meditation. But they have to be controlled. And you have to be let go of your existing patterns. And this is very hard, especially if there's fear involved. Because these patterns have in a way kept you and your ancestors going for countless of generations. It's kind of like a proven system to get angry if you're hurt. But we have evolved. We're no longer animals and Therefore we also have the ability, but also the responsibility, to be more than an animal. Not just to allow the demo emotion to dictate our actions and thoughts, but to use these higher centers and to keep them clear and pure and unobscured. Exploring emotions is best done through the heart. So if you are going to meditate with an emotion, focus on the heart. If you focus lower, often you will feel very restless because the lower chakras are action centers. So they will try to drive you into doing something, into moving, into shifting your position, into rapid breathing. So if your focus is down there and you're emotional, it's very difficult to calm down. The heart, however, gives space, gives room for the emotion to show itself and to be associated with different patterns of thought, different patterns of action. So this is in a way allowing the emotion to move out, to take a larger part of your consciousness if you meditate on your heart and allow the emotion to come into it. And this is often also all that the emotion wants. It requires attention because there is something wrong, something created a shock in your system. If you pay attention to it, the impulse can move away because you are aware of it, you are dealing with it. So you no longer need to be alerted to it. All these signals you're getting from your body in the form of emotions and maybe other pains and stresses can be relieved by bringing them to the heart and allowing the heart to connect to them, to experience them. It doesn't mean that the heart needs to have a solution for everything. It just needs to acknowledge what exists. And once the emotion gets acknowledged, the fear, the stress and the pain, even if there is no solution, they will become a lot less acute. They will calm down. And they will exist, but they will no longer threaten your consciousness or your self-control. I hope this will help. In the next video we will be talking about how to deal with attachments and habits. Enjoy your meditation.